在当今世界，我们格外重视材质。现代技术可以指导我们如何行事，却没有告诉我们该做什么以及为什么要这么做。所以，人们开始求助于古人的智慧。中国传统哲学是最为多样化、最深刻，且最令人兴奋的智慧之一。我的名字叫万柏安，是瓦萨学院的詹姆斯·门罗·泰勒哲学教授。我教授中国哲学以及中国传统文学。哎，没有，没有，阿杰，说的很好。I'm part of the generation that got excited about China after China opened up. To be honest, I also was really excited about the Bruce Lee film *Enter the Dragon*, and so I wanted to learn more about Chinese culture. Chinese philosophy must be seen as a human being. Being weak is stronger than being strong. What does that mean? It changes fundamentally your understandings of things and opens up new possibilities. More than any other ancient philosophy that I've studied, Chinese philosophy really does well with the practical ends that can help us recognize our nature as humans and be able to maximize what we are. In the fast-paced modern life, we often fail to think about important questions. We often forget the importance of pursuing wisdom. Maybe only remembering the past. 才能更好的触摸未来，请加入我们，一起踏上学习中国智慧的旅程吧。本集我们将聚焦于老子，撰写了《道德经》的传奇人物。两千五百年来，他在中国乃至全世界都产生了巨大影响。我们在中国的河南省鹿邑县，据说这里是老子的出生地。老子在中国人尽皆知。他是中国哲学的传奇人物。老子是道家思想的创始人，而道家思想也是世界上最深邃的哲学思想之一。他将自己的智慧写进了《道德经》里，这是在《圣经》和《伯家梵歌》之外，世界历史上被翻译最多的经典著作。Are either mythical or at least historically suspect. He was known by many names, sometimes called Lao Dan, sometimes called Li Er. Even his name, Lao Tzu, technically just means old master, and it may not be a name at all. The earliest Chinese biography of Lao Tzu says that he was born during the spring and autumn period in ancient China. He was kind of a librarian in the Zhou Dynasty archives. This was put his lifetime over 2,500 years ago. In the Sima Qian written in the Lao Tzu Letter, there are three people who can be called the Lao Tzu. The age is over 200 years. He said, I'll just write this here. I don't know myself. We are now in Lu Yi City, a library in Lu Yi City. 一家专门为老子所建的博物馆里，这里有几百件表现老子形象的艺术品，所有艺术品上老子的面孔都不一样。每个人心中都有一个老子，我们无法描述老子究竟是怎样的人。根据记载，老子晚年决定离开洛阳，出函谷关，一路向西。边境的守卫要求他在离开之前写下点什么，于是他就写出了《道德经》。这本高深的著作只有五千多字，其中没有提及任何人物姓名
，也没有提及任何的历史事件。我们无从得知这本书是如何诞生的，但是它却吸引且深刻影响了古今中外的许多思想家。两千多年没有挖出老子的书，但是出来，在一九七二年，长沙的马王堆出土了大批的帛书，也有老子的作品，大概汉代初年的。后来，他有北大汉简，但是更惊人的是，一九七三年在湖北的荆州郭店村，挖出了三个老子的注简，是战国时代的抄本。两千多年来，《道德经》的文本基本上是一致的，但在荆门出土的郭店楚简，却引发了许多疑问。这是现存最早的一版《道德经》，可以追溯到公元前四世纪。它比当今流行的版本要短得多，书中的章节也要少一些。郭店楚简来只有《荆本老子》，就是王弼本《老子》的三分之一。虽然个别的字词不太一样，但是并没有完全超出经本以外的新的内容。很有可能当时老子的主体已经完成了，在战国的早中期呢，已经开始流行了。这让我想到了《荷马史诗》，后人曾经普遍认为是一位双目失明的吟游诗人口述了这本巨著。现在我们更倾向于认为一群人共同完成了这部史诗。可这并不能改变这部作品在文学史上的伟大地位，《道德经》也是如此。On this fragile piece of ancient bamboo, we have a record of the invention of the concept of Tao being used to describe a cosmological concept. The earliest meaning of Tao is a path, like the path you take through a forest. We can find versions of it in the oracle bone inscriptions, where it appears to be a picture of a crossroads. But then it comes to refer to the way to do something, especially the right way to live and the right way to organize society. And this is the way that most early Chinese philosophers used the concept. But what's distinctive about Taoism is arguing that the term can also be used to refer to an entity that existed before heaven and earth and is responsible for the way things are. And the way they should be in ideal circumstances. There is a thing shapeless yet complete, born before heaven and earth. How alone, how silent, independent and unchanging. It can be considered the mother of heaven and earth. I know not its name, but I nickname it the Way. Lao Zi 之前有《易经》《尚书》。《诗经》，这些典籍，并没有直接说我们现在所说的哲学问题。我们从哪里来，往何处去？万物的根源是什么？老子开始，中国的哲学才有哲学上所谓的形上学 （metaphysics）。人们经常会以为，只有闲着没事干的人才会研究哲学。事实上，无论在欧洲还是亚洲，哲学往往发展于社会动荡的时期。苦难中的人们需要得到精神解脱。春秋战国时期便是如此。在长达五百年的时间里，中国群雄割据。虽然有一个统治者，周天子。确实有名无权，实权掌握在诸侯手中。各国混战不休，争名夺利，只是为了生存下来。在老子之前的两千年的历史里面，没有出现过这么强烈的这个巨变。在孔子的思想里面，有非常充分的表达。就是李焕月崩。Here we have a copy of the Beijing version of the Laozi, which is the oldest surviving complete version of our text. In this passage, 
Lao Tzu describes the political situation in the era in which he lives, which drove people like him to first philosophize. The court is resplendent, yet the fields are overgrown. The granaries are empty, yet some wear fancy clothes and carry sharp swords. They're stuffed with food and possess wealth in abundance. This is called thievery. This is not the way. 伟大思想的产生一般都跟时代巨变有关这一时期被称作百家争鸣我们 here in what is perhaps the largest collection in China of stone inscriptions showing a legendary meeting between Confucius and Lao Tzu. There are different versions of this story, but in all of them, Lao Tzu is the older, more established philosopher, and Confucius is coming to him to ask for his insight and wisdom. Chung 但是到了宇宙的层次每个人来到这个世间生而不有we're here at the Tianton, the Temple of Heaven. Nowadays, this is one of the biggest tourist attractions in Beijing. But traditionally, the emperors of the Ming and Qing dynasties would come here to perform ceremonies to thank and to honor Tian or Heaven. Oh my God. Chinese thought of heaven as a higher power that was on the side of virtue and morality and would reward it in the long run. 
In fact, the emperors of the Ming and the Qing believed that they had a mandate to rule, which had been given to their ancestors for their virtue and which they could maintain as long as they stayed on heaven's good side. Think of the Tao as absolutely everything in its purely non-differentiated state. We see a world around us of differentiated things. There's me, there's you, there's a table, etc. The degree to which we see the world this way is the degree to which we are removing ourselves from the Tao. The more we are able to sense the interrelations of everything around me, the more I can live effectively in the world, the closer we're getting to the Tao. Often when we use the term virtue, we mean it in a very strong ethical sense. For the Lao Tzu, what it really means is relating well to everything around you, so it doesn't mean you're acting morally, it means you're acting in accordance with the Tao. Lao Tzu did以及道与德进行了重新解读，广受后世许多中国人的欢迎。这个概念也吸引了许多现代人，吸引了语言不同时代不同、文化不同以及信仰不同的人。If we are seeing the Tao, we are realizing. Everything is interrelated. When you think of the values that the Lao Tzu is trying to undercut, it is chilling to note how totally predominant those values are. We live in a world where so much of the focus is about the individual constantly trying to impose on the world a set of understandings of what is good, what is bad, differentiating the world to sets of, of judgments, what I fear we are failing to do often is ask the big questions. Are we making the right assumptions or should we rethink some of them? The key figures found Chinese philosophy very, very powerful are those who are trying to rethink a lot of the assumptions. Our journey to understand Lao Tzu has brought us here to Copenhagen, the home of Niels Bohr, one of the greatest physicists of the 20th century and one of the founders of quantum mechanics, a theory that is remarkably successful but very difficult to interpret. We are very 组成物质世界的最基本的粒子并没有确定的位置或运动几百年间牛顿的经典力学认为我们是能够精确的确定物体的状态与行为的然而量子力学揭示出亚微观世界似乎充满了不确定性这一研究范式的惊人转变在物理
，世界上有些事物是相互依赖又相互冲突的，只有通过事物之间的矛盾，我们才能获得创造力，并且不断的进化。在亚里士多德的古典西方传统与逻辑中，他们声称现实不存在矛盾。如果你遇到了矛盾，那是因为你的思想有谬误。牛顿经典力学认为。宇宙遵循着固有的规律，但量子力学理论打破了这种说法，还让人们对亚里士多德哲学产生了疑问，某种程度上颠覆了一千年以来西方哲学的基础。When Niels Bohr was knighted by the Danish government for his contributions to physics, he got to design his own coat of arms, and he put the Taiji II on his coat of arms, which shows the influence of Lao Tzu's ideas on Bohr's thoughts. At one level, I would say the Lao Tzu is not trying to teach us about the actual workings of the world in a strong sense. However, it does challenge our assumptions. One of the dominant modes now in natural science was extreme reductionism. So we're now learning with nutrition. You can do tiny studies of every single food we eat and all the nutrients in those foods and what they do to you know, this part of our body. And we are now beginning to realize, actually, if you are thinking in more holistic ways, it changes fundamentally your understandings of things. This, of course, is something that's been part of Chinese medicine for millennia. Intentionally not see how things interrelate with everything else just leads to a complacency. Western modern physics theorist and philosopher Francis Bacon once said, "Science is the forcing of nature to follow human desires." 但是道家提出了不一样的观点，也就是科学技术可以与自然相辅相成。让我们来看看道家思想在现实中的实践吧。尽管他的设计师可能并不知道，他无意中运用了道家思想。你好，万教授，欢迎到我们一百兆瓦光热电站。这种光热电站是中国绿色倡议的一部分。旨在早日帮助中国达到碳中和，从而帮助世界缓解全球变暖的难题。这就是我们那个疾控室，所有的操作和指挥都在这儿完成。几千年前，中国人就已经知道通过太阳来取火了。实际我们现在利用的也是这个原理，也就是我把白天的热量收集回来，在发电的同时做储备，到了晚上，把这个储备好的热量。再进行发电，所以呢，这是一个带储能的新能源的一个发电行业。这个镜子我们叫定日镜，是要跟踪着太阳在旋转的，它要把光全部打到我们那个两百六十米高的那个吸热器上面去。这个大屏上，它就能看到每一个点上的温度，说根据这个点的温度，它们来进行控制。I feel like I'm in a science fiction film, and I'm an explorer who's visiting a civilization with advanced technology. The layout of the plant reminds me of a line from the Tao Te Ching: "Thirty spokes share one hub, but it is depending on the nothing in the middle of the wheel that we have the usefulness of the vehicle." The concept of nothing in the Tao Te Ching is easy to misunderstand. It doesn't refer to complete non-being or the total deprivation of qualities. Nothing for Lao Tzu refers to things that are intangible, things that are not concrete, things that we often overlook but are nonetheless essential to creativity and to productivity. All the energy comes from the sun. The energy in the air is not to produce heat, but to gather heat. So it's a pure energy source. 说是一个真正的纯绿色新兴的这么一个产业。我们国家在联合国环保会议上承诺过，二零三零年实现碳达峰，二零六零年实现碳中和。为了这两个目标呢，这几年就开始加大新能源方面的建设。人类社会不断的在踩油门，而道家给我们的智慧就说，要踩刹车。道家呢，对于人类为了满足人的欲望而不断的开发的技术，是保持警惕的。它最后会导致的是对人欲望的无限制的刺激。人是有限的
，地球也是有限的。这样一个有限的存在，生活在一个无限的时空当中啊，不能为所欲为。但是他并没有说要让所有的人都住到山林里面去做隐士，因为老子在最后一章里面他就提到了，就是利而不害，为而不争，也就是我们这个社会呢，既要相处，但是呢又要和谐相处。但如何才能够相处到最圆满的境界，是他一直在寻找的。这种寻找对于我们今天来说还是有意义的。I certainly remember the first time I read the Lao Tzu back in high school, where I assumed the Lao Tzu is all about not having a state and where the sage would not be doing anything in a literal sense. And then I, I was struck by all of these phrases, things like there are laws, but no one knows what they are. Well, why would there be laws? Why would you not tell them what they are? Then later I realized that do nothing doesn't literally mean you do nothing. What it means is you are seemingly doing nothing. But in fact, you are doing an incredible amount, but never in a way that seems overtly forcing anyone into anything. There's one beautiful line in Lao Tzu that will say, "After the sage, through seemingly doing nothing, the people would simply say, 'Oh, we have always been like this naturally.'" One of the most intriguing but also shocking things that you say in your book, "The Path." Is that we can think of Lincoln as perfect Laozian sages? Could you expand on that? So Lincoln becomes the president. He is. Water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow, or it can crash. Be water, my friend. Take that right leg up and go straight back into the target like this. Here, set. Good. Good. One more. Good. We come here to meet my friend. Good. 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 亚历克西斯·麦克劳德会面，他是印第安纳大学的教授，中国哲学以及中美洲哲学的专家。
他即将出版一部有关武术与亚洲哲学之间关系的书。I got interested in the martial arts as part of the kung fu craze in the 70s because of Bruce Lee's film. I actually have a similar story, so I also got interested in martial arts through film. Enter the Dragon was a big one for me. There's this great scene. There's a guy on the boat who's challenging Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee says, "Okay,、uh, I'm going to show you my style." What's your style? My style? You can call it the art of fighting without fighting. The guy says, "Okay, show me some of this style." And so Bruce Lee says, "Let's get on this boat and go over to that island over there." And once he gets in the boat, Bruce Lee unties it and allows it to go out into the sea. Hey, what the hell are you doing? Hey, are you crazy? And the guy is out there. Ah, you're enough free. <laughs> He's Bruce Lee, right? He could have engaged with the guy and probably、yeah. beaten him up easily. He knows this guy wants to fight so badly. He's going to rush into doing foolish things, and so he lets him out here and ends up overcoming him. He's used Wu Wei. One of the things that really takes students often to the next level is moving from the first stage of constantly fight, fight, fight like this to now using relaxation, using yielding, using empty space, coming in and then bang. So here, same thing as that. Is that yes, exactly. What might you do if somebody threw like a right cross at you? Yeah, of course. So if you're punching and I can get out of the way here, then I'm controlling. I can hear or I can hear right, something like this.、Right? When someone aggresses, allow that to happen and simply move with it, and then wait for that opening that they present with that aggression, and then you make your move. This actually is very connected to Taoism. Be like water, right? Moving to where it needs to go. You're going down here, and then over like this. You can turn. In. Things are continually changing. If we kind of say this is the Tao, right, and I'm going to make it concrete, then things have already moved beyond us, right? And so it's not the constant Tao. And this is very much behind kind of Bruce Lee's idea. So. Every time we open up a class in Taekwondo, we start with particular set kick. After you do this over and over and over again for enough time, the next level is to then be able to do that in non-forced way. There's this move called the kip up. You're on the ground and you got to push yourself up and jump up instead of standing. And I was practicing this, you know, for over a year. I had the strength, I had the speed, I had the everything I needed for this, but I just wasn't quite there. I would get it and then I would kind of fall. My first teacher at the time recognized what was going on, and he said, "Okay, what I want you to try to do now is to do that same move, but this time don't think about it. Take the idea of the move out of your head." In the first time, it happened.、Right? And I said, "What was that? Like, what was going on?" And I think part of what was going on there is this is way trusting my technique in a certain way, using that muscle memory and responding in this kind of natural way. Was to move away from a forced kind of thinking about things into a non-forced thinking about things and not active. And when they get there, everything just gets better. Nice. One of the ways I teach the Tao Te Ching in my classes is as a kind of ancient self-help text. Whatever goal we have, there's a kind of best way to achieve this, right? Which involves things like Wu Wei, recognizing the value of Yin, etc. Right? Getting wisdom is a matter of taking that knowledge and make it your own. Nice. It's something we have to read and apply and understand through our own lives and through our own、uh, understandings, which really complete it. Chung, right? It yeah, completes yeah. the Tao Te Ching. Would you come in, please? Welcome. Oh, this is lovely. To our big castle. <laughs> <laughs> My first guitars ever. They enlighten you. Yes, metaphorically. And <laughs> <laughs> this is the Laozi guitar I made. 对道的探索指引我们来到了德国汉堡，与雷蒙德伯克见面。Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Great. Here's my big recording studio. <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> 雷蒙德是一位吉他手和作曲家，他出了一部重金属专辑，其中将《道德经》作为他的歌词。Spirit of Laodan is my latest project. It took me about two and a half years to finish. It combines my natural musical direction with my interest in Tai Chi and Tao、uh, Te Ching. This one, the Ahu, I played myself. I saw Chinese guy playing the Ahu, and I thought,、hmm, I have those jackets. 
<laughs> I make it my, myself. <laughs> this is my ehu. <laughs> How did you first get interested in Chinese thought or Lao Tzu in particular? In 93, I wanted to start my rock and roll guitar player mm -hmm. hero uh, <laughs> career. <laughs> and then I got my injury with the nerve. I woke up, had massive pain in my fingers. I had uh, no feeling. And I had to um, yeah, live with it uh, for about four or five months uh, till I had the, the surgery. Mm -hmm. It took me 10 years to being able again to play guitar almost I did before. It wasn't only that the nerve was broken down. Every uh, 11 seconds, wow. it throws my arm away. Uh, <laughs> it was so bad. You get a surge, a sudden surge of pain. Yes. So I sit in my apartment and my room and I thought, what can I do now? I'm a musician. Welcome, everybody. We start with the first move, Jingan Dao Dui, which means Buddha's warrior and hence mortal. Your inner connections. Since 99, I guess. I am uh, studying a little bit of uh, Tai Chi Chuan. And what made you decide to practice Tai Chi Chuan? I can't really explain that, but when I saw Tai Chi Chuan, that's uh, the one for me. When the depression is yeah. coming up, through the Tai Chi, I can adjust them. Then I came in contact with the sayings from Lao Tzu during the classes from my master, uh, Jan Silberstorff. Okay,接下来的这一位表演者呢,是今天晚上唯一的非亚洲表演者,来自德国的史阳先生。Actually, when I was young, I was pretty much into punk rock. As a pretty wild teenager, actually, we had a lot of actually street violence. So my first idea was just to learn a martial art to defend myself. Then I ended up in the wrong class. A friend of mine from school brought me to a Tai Chi master. And I thought, oh, how can this help me to fight some whatever kind yeah, of aggressive people on the street? I didn't understand. But then, the first lesson, I had some very nice, beautiful feeling of, of what they call energy flow or something. And, and after that, I, I met with some punks on a rooftop. We were drinking some beer and we were watching over the city. And, and I was still sitting there having this feeling. I said, you know what, to my friends, I thought, if this continues this feeling, maybe I, maybe I stop drinking. Everybody was silent and, and, and watching me. I said, oh, that's good, then you can drive the car. You know? <laughs> so, so but, but in the very first lesson, I realized, wow, that's my life. I stopped all the drinking and smoking. I stopped to be punk. Most of my friends from that time later, they died on drugs and alcohol or street violence. So it changed my life completely 180 degree and actually saved my life. Lao Tzu writes in his Tao Te Ching, human beings because of Earth. Earth is because of heaven, heaven is because of Tao, Tao is because of itself. So what belongs to Earth from us as human beings, we let sing to the Earth. That we have a stable stance. Yeah, you push strong, okay? But I can push him easy. Because the heaviness goes to the ground. We stay stable, we get self-confident. But same time, by sinking down, the spirit becomes empty. And it opens up to heaven, to sky. Mm. So we get the spiritual connection to what Lao Tzu is writing about Tao. This is why we practice Tai Chi, to bring the mental and the physical aspect into balance. Relax your shoulders. Yeah, that was already two centimeters. You feel it's falling yeah. down. Thank you. So in Tai Chi practice, it's always the same form, but when the balance becomes deeper and deeper, you feel connected to everything around you. It's not you doing the thing, but it goes through you. The more you come close to what is called emptiness, the more you come close to the realization of Da. What I try in my practice is to reverse 
Tao Te Ching 42. The Tao give birth to the one, to the two, to the three, to the 10,000. Yeah, I start from the 10,000 back to the three, back to the two, back to yeah. the one, back mm -hmm. into the Tao. You connect it to the Tao, you should act through the. And but this, you don't need to hide from all this. You mm -hmm. can take it as a field of application and experience. Again. And I realized for myself that the Tai Chi form can be a beautiful bridge to transport the deep mental experiences into normal life actions. It's a great tool to make everything one word. This is my new place for the rehearsal room. Raimund, he called me one day and said, okay, um, I want to do it with heavy metal. I said, it's a great idea. <laughs> I mean, of my past anyway, you know, so yeah, say, that's a great idea. Yeah. I'm very sure nobody did this before for the Tao Te Ching. Please come in. Oh my gosh. Wow, this is so cool. People always think that a wise one is someone sitting silently at home, playing, <laughs> a, playing a piano, you know what right, I mean? Right, right, yeah. Piano. And this is a good chance to say, no, it's not like this. The inspiration to realize Tao can be found everywhere. It can be a smart kid, can be a wise teacher, but also can be heavy metal, can be whatever. If you realize the silence and the nothingness within the loudness, mm. it's being about heavy metal. Yeah, oh, then yeah. you really got it, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's great. <laughs>So oh, this is our collection. Wow. Everything we have here are different translations of the Tao Te Ching. How many translations of the Tao Te Ching are there? Based on the current count, 2,052 in 97 languages. So last year I published this book. Almost 300 pages is just a list of the translations. I wanted to give you a copy. You can read how I signed it, I think it's to my best teacher, Brian from Misha. <laughs> I should have had my best teacher after Lao Tzu.我们来到中国天津的南开大学，与台米霞教授见面。我很自豪地说，台教授是我以前的学生，他在南开大学建立了全球老学研究中心。one of the things I've done in the last, we could say, five years is to find all the different kinds of translations in all the languages around the world. Mm. So the idea of global laozigetics is to look at the entire phenomenon of the text in the world throughout history. This is a Latin translation, no later than 1729. It's really the earliest encounter between Western philosophy and Taoism. Was this a Jesuit translation? Yes. The Tao Te Ching has been translated more than any other work except for the Bible. The Bible has had hundreds of years of organizations that have intentionally tried to translate and spread it to every person on the whole planet. But the Tao Te Ching had no such organization. People just reading the text and finding it interesting and valuable and wanting to translate it over and over again. The book right here, um, it says, A New English Version by Ursula K. Le Guin. Many of her very famous science fiction or fantasy novels have Taoist elements. She read this text in English, right, not in Chinese, for a very long time. And so this version, I would say, represents her understanding or her reimagining, like in chapter 28, knowing man and staying woman. In the original, it's not necessarily about being both man and woman, but it could be about certain qualities of aggression and passivity or these kinds of more abstract things, but she makes it very much a, a gender concept. And her translation is popular, that then it gets retranslated. So we have a Spanish version, we have a Dutch version. It's not just going out of China in a single simple direction, but you have these networks and branches of different imaginings of the philosophy. Now, what about you? How did you first get excited and interested in Lao Tzu and the Tao Te Ching? So, we also have that translation. <laughs> so this is a translation published in 1972 originally by Feng Jiafu and his American wife, Jane English. It's probably the most popular English translation out of all the 600 translations. It influenced the counterculture generation. <laughs> Set me free, come on little girl. 
in the 60s and the 70s, you have this movement of people who want to move away from Western modernization, want to go back to the land, and they look to East Asian culture. And so one of those resources was the Tao Te Ching. And it just kind of entered popular knowledge. Even people like George Harrison in The Beatles, he selected a chapter from the Tao Te Ching in English to be the lyrics to a song called Inner Light. My parents both read that particular translation when they were young teenagers. That was the first Tao Te Ching I encountered when I was 14. I was fascinated from the beginning. I don't know why. <laughs> Why have I spent my whole life studying this one book? All the words are very simple, but the meaning is not simple. In those few thousand words, all you have is abstract ideas on how to face very continually reoccurring human challenges. The history of this vision and why... And these abstract ideas very easily can cross cultural boundaries. And people all around the world can feel that it somehow is the text is speaking to them. It doesn't matter if it's a myth or 100% historical fact. There's a culture that grows up around the text that's 100% real. You have the, the lineages of the passing of the wisdom, and the wisdom is accumulated through generations. It's not just information, it's how to live, how to be a person, how to understand your place in the world. And that's the level I think wisdom operates on. Ni 常有欲以观其降，反者道之动，弱者道之用。Alle Dinge unter dem Himmel entstehen im Sein. Das Sein entsteht im Nichtsein. Contria prosus, humana prudentia. Sopliantur igeni, at abundantes superfluent. The Tao gave birth to the One. The One gave birth to the Two. The Two gave birth to the Three and the three gave birth to the myriad things. Zawakaitan这个项目之前,我完全不了解道德经对于这个世界的不同层面,居然有如此深远的影响。不论是在过去,还是在当今,人们对于智慧,而非简单的聪慧之语,都有着强烈的渴望。道德经中有一句名言,